Hi everyone, this is Saskia from Los Angeles Guinea Pig Rescue and I would like to talk a little more today about calcium and the big calcium debate and um, you know the do's and don'ts of calcium and why we think the way we do, uh, why I think the way I do and how I came to that conclusion, etc. So that is something I didn't actually, didn't really go into detail when I did the video previously. So I really want to talk a little more about certain things. Um, I actually, I actually got a little organized and I wrote this stuff down. <laughs> and um, on my guinea pig book, isn't that cute? I love this one. Got it, found it on Amazon somewhere. And super cute. Okay, so, okay, so the, the calcium. So the current popular thinking is that we are gonna reduce the calcium intake of our pet guinea pigs so that that will help prevent kidney stones because piggies do tend to be prone to get kidney stones. Um, actually, I don't even know how prone they are, to be honest. I mean, we, we see it regularly, but you know, not sure how, what the percentage is, but um, anyway, it's just not as simple as that because the stone is made out of calcium, we need to limit the calcium out of the diet. It just doesn't work like that. So I want to explain again how that part works. Um, stones, kidney, and bladder stones, they're, they're different but the same. They are made out of absolutely calcium and it binds with something, which is oxalate. Guinea pig stones are usually, the majority of them are oxalate and calcium based. Now, oxalate is the bad guy because oxalate is in spinach, rhubarb, I mean a whole bunch of veggies, did I write it down? Oh yeah, spinach. Well, sweet potatoes, we don't feed those to our guinea pigs, right? Beets, we don't either. Peanuts. Not at all. Rhubarb, which is something that I, you know, we don't really eat that here in America at all. It's an old-fashioned kind of vegetable. Uh, soy products and grains have lots of oxalate. So what happens is that guinea pig eats oxalate, and oxalate, or you know what, the body actually makes oxalate as well. So what happens is that the oxalate needs the calcium to to bind to, in order to leave the body. Okay, so the calcium is kind of like the good guy here because the calcium says, hey, Mr. Oxalate, you come in with me. And it leaves the system, it leaves the body through the intestines. Now, if there is not enough calcium to pick up that oxalate, then what happens is that it's going to go through, you know, go through the bladder and comes out as urine. So that is definitely not not good because then that is when stones are made so that's not it's not a good thing so I hope that that kind of explains it you know very simple terms now the other thing is that so what I'm saying is actually you know what don't limit your guinea pigs calcium intake don't do it it's not healthy so and then there's actually no scientific studies that support that if you have a guinea pig and you limit their calcium intake that you're gonna lessen the possibility that they're gonna have stones. So sure, you can go and, and Google and you can find stuff and you'll see some whole bunch of websites, you know, writing the same thing, but it's just the same as people talking and, you know, one person hears it from another and we're all just gonna copy it. It's actually, I don't think there's a, a lot of kind of independent thinking that went on in this one. It just all of a sudden became gospel and it's, it is not based on anything scientific. It's actually completely illogical to do that if you think about it. Um, if you really look at all, all, all the information out there. So then people were asking me, well, where's your uh, research and your scientific you know, articles that you're citing? And you, I don't have any because there aren't any. But like I said, also there aren't any one studies that also say that you should limit the calcium. So in the absence of both, right, then what do you do? So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to do what is the most logical. The most logical, what it's telling me is that I should not 
limit the calcium because that is a very, very necessary mineral in, in, in a guinea pig's diet, anyone's diet, really. Um, and if you go to um, some of the websites where they talk about kidney stones, bladder stones for people, now, of course, guinea pigs are not people. I get that. But the renal system works on the same principle, right? Pretty much across mammals. The renal system works in the same principle. So one of the first thing it says actually is eat more calcium rich foods. And the reason for that is, okay, I'm going to actually do this. Um, the most common type of kidney stone is the calcium oxalate. And that's actually true for guinea pigs as well. It is the most common um, stone for a guinea pig. Uh, leading many people to believe that they should avoid eating calcium. But the opposite is true, because low calcium diets may increase your kidney stone risk and your risk of osteoporosis. And then the next one is eat fewer oxalate-rich foods, which, of course, are the spinach, the soy, the grain products. And that's a tough one, because most of us feed a pellet that has tons of grain in it. It's really hard to find a grain-free pellet with just a nice grass hay as the base of your pellet. Um, it's almost impossible. So definitely, I think a big contributor is the oxalates that are in the guinea pig pellets. That's not a good thing. Um, and this is the reason why we feed a completely grain-free food that is not only that, but it's also 100% organic, and that's our own piggy's choice food, um, which, is a lovely food they they love it um and it's not available unfortunately but people were asking they really want to see if they can buy the food so we're going to work on it working on it okay so the other one is avoid vitamin c supplements now and why is that um there was a study that says that people who took high doses of vitamin c doubled the risk of forming a kidney stone um, and researchers don't believe vitamin C from food carries the same risk. So there's a difference between synthetic vitamin C and, synth uh, and natural vitamin C that you just get from the food. Now, the, um, about the vitamin C thing as well. Guinea pigs need on average, I think, between 50 to 90 milligrams, you know, of um, uh, vitamin C per day. Now, a, a half a cup of yellow peppers, is already uh, exceeds the daily intake, like by far exceeds the daily uh, recommended intake of vitamin C for guinea pigs. So with that knowledge, I honestly cannot see how we have to supplement vitamin C to keep a guinea pig healthy. And not just that, I mean, you're supplementing with a synthetic vitamin C. And I think that's the biggest problem I have with it, is that it not it's not uh, a fresh, um, vitamin C that is directly comes from the food but it's a synthetic one out of a bottle or in a pill and it's just I'm not a big fan of that um, I, I'd be much happier if we would all be giving him orange juice instead or something you know um, so yeah definitely the vitamin C that's another big thing it's like you have to give him the, the, the vitamin C um, extra vitamin C and I just, you know, oh, and then the other thing, sorry, my thoughts are all over the place. And I, I you, you, the guys, you, you watch me a lot, you already know, I'm always all over the place. But um, eventually I'll get there. Just bear with me. Um, I was talking about the vitamin C and the other thing about the vitamin C. Oh, yes, a lot of people um, are under the impression that food is degraded, that the vitamin C content is not there anymore because of all the fertilizers and pesticides. Now, that may well be true. Um, that organic foods that hasn't been, um, you know, grown with the use of pesticides is definitely a little more vibrant and healthier. I, I absolutely believe that. Um, but it doesn't mean that it's degraded to the point that you're not getting enough vitamin C. Because if that were the case, people would be sick all the time because they wouldn't be able to get in enough vitamin C from their, from their food, right? They'd be getting scurvy all the time. So... If there's any reason that you can't feed your guinea pig um, fresh foods or your guinea pig won't eat the fresh foods, that's a whole different story. And then, yes, absolutely supplement because you do want to get that, that vitamin C in there. If they get very sick if the guinea pigs don't get vitamin C because their body does not make any vitamin C. Okay? So, 
I think I covered a bunch. What do you think, Ursula? I think so, too. I know everybody's going to address their concerns, and I know you'll answer the questions. And you know what, what is really important that I also do, do want to say is that I am the very last person to tell you that it's my way or the highway, right? Like, you get a lot of people that are like, absolutely, the buck stops there, and it's just they know best, and it cannot possibly be anything else, and you know what? Maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe I am. It's like I said, there's been no studies. I can't cite in any studies. But I also cannot cite studies for the other side that do limit the calcium. Um, so again, common sense is that, well, let's just not limit calcium. It's, I don't think that's good. But I'm not gonna be the guinea pig police. You know, I always say that, but it's true, I'm not. Listen, everyone is entitled to be a free thinker and come to conclusions yourself. And that includes when you're talking about how you eat yourself, how you feed your animals. I mean, all of that, don't ever let anybody tell you what to do or how to do it, because that is not the way the universe works. You need to be your own person and you need to be that free thinker. So you have to just go and look around and use your common sense and do what feels right for you. Whether or not that's more calcium or less calcium, I don't know. Um, the other thing also is, you know, the, the, I think the biggest reason guinea pigs get kidney stones is genetics. It's because they already ha are predisposed to kidney stones. So that I think goes a long way. I, I don't necessarily think it's all because of the calcium that they're eating at all, or, you know, it has nothing to do with that. Um, it also is that if you, in an area with really hard water, where the water quality is really hard, then that may also contribute to formation of stones. Or, But you know, it, it happens so very rarely that your guinea pigs, I mean, I'm sure we all have stories and we see them a lot because man, we, we have a lot of guinea pigs here, right? Um, but to do something that drastic to remove an essential mineral from your animal's diet in the off chance that they might have a kidney stone, it's making them sick. It's making them sick, and I don't think it's worth it. Um, I have a question. Yes. A lot of people ask us about this product called Stonebreaker. Oh, that's a good one. Okay, so Stonebreaker is, it's a very, it's actually very sad because I have seen people read about Stonebreaker and that it helps and if you have a kidney stone it totally the kidney stone went away melted somehow and, and left the body and it so everything is fine now so this is my take on it I don't believe that you should be using it as a remedy against kidney stones if your animal has kidney stones then there's only two ways of, of getting it out of their system which is the surgery or waiting till it passes naturally. Unfortunately, those are the only two options as far as I'm concerned. So there is no way that a supplement that you put in the mouth and that then has to go through the whole system of the guinea pig and then maybe gets all diluted and everything and maybe reaches the stone and does something to it. I mean, it just, I don't think so. I honestly don't. So what I've been seeing is that a lot of people have so much hope on the kidney stones that they put their animals on the kidney stone breaker, that's that, that stuff, the stone breaker, and they just get worse. And they are suffering for months and months. I've seen this where guinea pigs just are in so much pain and suffering because the owner loves them so much and is just so desperate to, to you know, keep them and, and, and make, and then want them pain free, and of course, but I think it's doing a lot of, it's not doing a lot of good, I was gonna say. It, I honestly don't think it works. What about and, as a preventative? Well, that's the thing. If people are saying that it worked, it's, it's, it's more than likely because the stone just, you know, left by itself, was passed naturally. Um, but yeah, as a preventative, I do believe that it's, it's gonna be beneficial in preventing it. So perhaps instead of limiting the, the calcium, maybe you want to start looking into a supplement like Stonebreaker. 
but don't use it as 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 a solution to a stone i don't think that's fair on the animal so and again my two cents you know you, you gotta make up your own mind really um but yeah so definitely the guinea pig police was out in force when i took <laughs> yeah when i um published that video and someone actually made a funny comment about that it was actually funny um but again guys just you got to do what feels right you know what is best for you you know what's best for your animals just do your research think logically and don't just blindly follow what someone says like oh i say it is this way so this is the only way and just because a lot of people are saying it doesn't mean that it is right that it's correct so I know anywhere you look online, you'll, you'll see that guinea pigs need to have a, a, a diet that is um, low in calcium. And that doesn't mean that it's correct. It really isn't. I think it's such a difficult topic because so many people have lost their pigs because of bladder stones. So they want to find an answer of why it happened. And sometimes well, there isn't there, there a simple isn't. answer. I think that they are just prone to get it. And that is because of genetics. Um, You'll also find a lot of people that had guinea pigs with kidney stones that put them on a low calcium diet, like really severely restricting the calcium, and they still got stones after one after the other. So that it didn't seem to help much. Now again, there's no official studies, it's just from what I know, I've spoken to a lot of people, um, but that seems to also be telling, right? If it really worked so well, then why are these piggies that already get the stones? They just get keep getting them. They just keep coming back after they are put on this low calcium diet. So, yeah. Well, thanks for clearing all that up. Yeah. Us. I'm sure I a lot of people will be appreciative of this. Yeah. So, yeah. Now, if you have questions, you know, put them in the comments. And yeah. I usually will read them and I'll get to them for sure. Um, but yeah, let's, let's clear this up. All right. Well, thanks, Seth. Thank you so much.